to the Ascension Invitational, you are going to be part of history. We're here at Wide 868 and uh, Flow Sports brought to you by Terminex. Of course, why do I say history? This is the first installation of the Ascension Invitational Tournament. Of course, you might get your first goal. You might get your first celebration. Definitely the first kickoff. It is the launch. You've got to follow us. Of course, we got some of the major teams in the Super League. Can uh, FC Santa Rosa and Goya United match up with the juggernauts of San Juan Jablote in the Pro League and uh, Defence Force? We're going to see. Of course, this is the first domestic cup uh, of 2019 as well. So you got to follow us and get all the action right here on the Ascension Invitational with yours truly, Jazzy, in the mix. And here comes more of defense force, touches once, touches twice, puts towards the box, crosses, and it's stopped by the center back and cleared out. Beautiful diagonal pass here, and it's into space. This can spell the engine, number 13, oh, he stops it. Here comes more once again. He's on the attack. Beautiful splitting pass. Crosses. Oh, and it's stopped by the defender. Interception by Peters. And here he goes. He's driving towards the box. Low driven shot, and it's stopped. The skipper, purposeful. Off to Asia, Asia, off to Felix. Felix, he drives it across. Oh, this is spell danger. And Jocelyn, it's a goal. you're looking for. Here comes the number 10. Shoots flashes wide. Oh. Justin, can he get a second? Here comes his off the bar!
In swing corner, Baltazar, near post of the bar, and here comes McIntyre, pounces on the loose ball, and it's a second for defense force. it was a, a fair game you know what I mean um, I thought we could have done a lot more I, the first game I think the guys you know you know some of them was a little you know what I mean um, it's a while before we, we, we played any game and um, I thought you know a lot of the combination play that 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 we, we spoke about, you know, it didn't happen, you know, I think we, we made some, some silly mistakes, you know, and I, I think we could have done much more better than how, how we performed today. Well, Konopia, Konopia is a team that, that, that always play off um, Rodley, you know, I mean, I think he's a, like to me, I think, you know, he's one of the better players we have in, in the country, you know, I mean, although he's playing with the Super League, you know, he could easily play with a national team, you know, I mean, and, um, I think the, 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 the more, Feel of him, and I think the that is one of the strengths, you know. So, so they probably try to execute their plan. How they see it? I think um, they dealt with it easy because you know I mean I told them because they they had one or two late practice game against Colombia in the early, and and they always was a physical team. So I think you know sometimes you know they would react, but you know, I think they they. they Show a lot of patience, a lot of, um, I would say, cool head because you know, we have a couple of hotels on the team you know, and they can react different. So, you know, kudos to them on the way of how they, they, they um, keep their cool head while they were, you know, I mean, being physically run over, I should say. My target is simple, you know, to win it all, right? Win it all. That is the reason why we're here, you know. We don't know when 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 the, the pro league gonna start, so we taking this tournament this tournament very serious, right? And um, it's also to measure to measure how far you know I mean what progress we been be making, right? But I go to look forward when the pro league starts, so we taking every game at a serious while we play. Um, we did well in terms of physicality and, and conditioning and so on. Our decision making was lacking today and our finishing was lacking. Um, we missed seven clear-cut opportunities. I would say clear-cut, some people would say have chances. And one of them included a penalty of which um, it was the most obvious, of course. Um, had we put away 30% of our chances, we'd have won the game. If we were in the highest level of football, our first season, probably the first half of the season. After we've played everybody, we would probably run through the league. Of course, we wouldn't win because we wouldn't win all our games. But in our second season, we would be a very strong force, I reckon. Because you would understand logically that um, we would need to be uh, familiar with how the Pro League teams play. And we have not been in that situation. This is our first, this is our first time. So. If we had a first rounds of game with them, we would understand how they play, the level of conditioning, the tactics they use and so on, and then we'd adjust accordingly. 
not playing a pro league side in a competitive environment. We were very tentative about how we approached the game and uh, that is not going to happen again. Now we've assessed a team that has represented Trinidad and Tobago in CONCACAF and CFU and so on, which is a formidable opponent and we've assessed that they have nothing on us but probably two lucky goals or finishes. Then we will be playing free-flowing football coming next game. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we have all the Pro League teams back to back to back to back to back. So they expect to see some adjustments. And I think for the purpose of entertainment, we'll play with a little more flair. So they will be entertained since this is a preseason tournament. Dangerous ball, misplaced out of my police, scramble in the six yard box and he scores! An early goal for Guaya! Very strong on the ball, brilliant turn. Presses down the wing. It's Marcus still with them a bit though. Here he goes, he wants to get the corner. Challenge! And he stopped. And here comes national goalkeeper Adrian Fonset. It's a poor touch. This could spell danger. Oh, and he gets the pass off. Police in search of the equalizer. Thomas, beautiful first touch. And it's a volley with the right straight into the back of the net. And it's a goal. in a dangerous area. Kareem Freitas could put a side 2 one up. Oh, and it's stopped by Caravan. Very soft. Leroy Jones sprints from the spot kick. A crack over shot. Fox sets up it. He stops it again and it's over the bar.
freak you care. Headed into space. Parry attacks it. He drives to the byline, hooks to the cross front and gets a hand. That's an open goal. Very easy for Romain. 2-1 to Guaya. Right now, right now, right now. Come together, right now, right now. Come this is our shot. Come together. Here comes the substitute number 26. He's a sprite since coming on. He drives it across. This could be dangerous. Oh, it's cleared once again by Guaya. Final whistle blows, Police FC 1, Guaya United 2. We have been waiting for the start of the league, working hard for the last couple of months. So it's great to start off with a victory. Uh, we inserted a lot of young guys into the team this year, and I was happy to see that when they were given the opportunity, they went out, they took it with both hands, and they got their reward. One of the complaints I had when I came in is that the youth wasn't getting enough chances over the last couple of seasons. So I'm a huge believer in youth. You know, um, I believe these are the guys we have to invest in going forward into the future. Right? So I was more than happy, especially with given the talent that we have. It was very, a very easy decision to give them playing time. Well, today, young McQuasey, Dujon, I think he did excellent. You know, we played a couple practice matches and he was a, lit, a little over aggressive. And that comes with you, you know, but today he showed a lot of maturity, you know, and he held out at the back. So I would give him the man of the match award, my, my opinion. I'll go to the other end of the spectrum, Leroy Jones, right? He worked tirelessly up front, you know, had a few chances to score, but the pressure that he applied on the defense created chances, stopped them from playing, especially in the second half. Because first half, we dropped off a bit to try and play on the counter. But I realized that the players weren't too comfortable with the ball. So I was doing the team a disservice by doing that, you know. So second half, we decided to press a lot higher and it paid dividends. All in all, I think once we keep building, keep plugging away, keep things consistent, I think we can do well in this tournament. I was not happy with the game. Right? Uh... So as far as positives are concerned, right, I thought in, for some uh, parts of the game we, we controlled it a little bit, not as, as much as I, I would have liked. Um, we had some decent attacks. Uh, we have been struggling to score goals, so uh, I think we saw a reflection of that tonight. Uh, we, you know, we failed to finish when really we should have. And um, I was not overly happy with our organisation at the back covering each other and, um, and certainly um, allowing soft goals. And so, positives, not much. We've been training, uh, we've been playing uh, training games every week, you know. Um, I think what affected our performance today really, one, the quality of the field, because the field was extremely bumpy. Right? So it was difficult to play the kind of football that we really wanted to, want to play. Um, and then the opponent were very aggressive, I'll give them um, kudos today, they, they, they did what they had to do, they were very aggressive to the ball. And we, we wanted a little more, too much time, you know, to play, right? And uh, again, I'll play down to, to the difficulties of the field a little bit. Um, the, the long off period, you know, I don't think it had anything to do with it. I, did, I just think, for me, um, our boys didn't adapt. Finishing is one of the big things, um, I told the boys, um, basically, we, um, we were deficient at both ends of the field, right? Giving up soft goals, not finishing the chances that we had. So those are the areas that we be more or less will be focusing on. I would also do some work on, on trying to get us a little more aggressive in the middle of the field because I think we, we like that a little bit. Terry, fantastic game we had here in Guaya this evening. Uh, what did you think about the football on the first day of the Ascension League? Well, I think we got exactly what we expect from down here at Guaya. You've got a big partisan crowd behind the home team. I didn't think they started the game particularly well, but I thought the, the crowd kept them going and they come out with a result I thought they deserved in the end. Did you think the crowd was the, um, the important 12th man that they needed to all be? All important factor because I thought police dominated the game first half. 
Their front three, I thought, were excellent. Police, their movement. And there was a definite pattern of play. You could see what they were trying to achieve when they had the ball. And I didn't see that at all in Guaya. I thought they got the ball, won the ball, give the ball back, won it, give it back. There was a definite game plan with the police. But they couldn't make that breakthrough. Taking nothing away from Guaya, they did have some good individuals this afternoon. I thought the changes that they made after the half time, I thought were all important. I thought Ferry are coming in on the right hand side there. I thought he gave Curtin a torrid time and indeed the two goals that police conceded were two very soft goals. They'd be very disappointed with that. But they were conceded because Guaya kept at it. Police seemed to have the um, edge on quality, yeah. but they couldn't finish in the final third. Yeah, I think so. I think their front three, um, De Freitas, a good player, you're looking at the other two guys up front. Belgrave, McPhee, I think were excellent up front, their movement and their interchange and the passing. You could see that was something that they worked on the training ground, but they couldn't actually break through. And I think that was because the back, the goalkeeper and the two centre-backs from Guaya were stout, hardy, with that big crowd behind them. They were holding on for dear life. Some of the tackles I thought referee could have been coming out with yellow and red cards, in fact, because it was tough at times. But when you're playing in front of such a partisan crowd as you get down here in Guaya, that's what it brings out of the home team. And I think there's no doubt in my mind tonight, anywhere else, and police come away with three points. I think the crowd getting behind their home team, spurring them on, the changes just after the break I thought were excellent because it then added a bit of pace to the team. And they've scrambled a result, scrambled three points in my eyes, Guaya. Do you think um, Travis really had a good game as a coach um, from the dugout? This well, I, I think, listen, there's two sides of football. There's offensive and there's defensive. And I thought defensively they were very strong. And as the game wore on and they were in front of the game, he dropped and Wolf in, in front of his back two defenders. So he solided the game up there and made it very difficult to penetrate through the centre. But I thought, offensively, I thought they were poor. They offered very little going forward in the first half, and it was only the pace, really, of Ferrier in the second half that opened up one or two good chances for Guaya. Um, I think he needs to work on that side of the game, so his whole team have got a game plan to get to areas where they can hurt the opposition, create chances and score goals. Good start to the Ascension League. Um, any pointers for either team? I just think, listen, this was a great start for any league. Look at the crowd that we finished off with tonight. They all went home happy, of course they did, because they were all from Guaya supporting yeah. the home team. But this is about community football at its best. Big turnout again. Both teams put their all into it because they had a big crowd to play in front of. And I thought there was, yes, there was a lack of quality and that might be because the pitch was poor. Please organise your pitches better than they are at the moment. But other than that, this was a good entertaining evening. evening. The right result for the locals. Police will lick their wounds and come back stronger because I think they have got better quality players. But um, who can argue with the 2-1 win for Guay at the end? Is this a good um, endorsement for mixing Pro League and Super League teams, you think? Absolutely. I think we've looked at a, a, a failing Pro League, struggling to get off the floor. And my God, I've been here 20 years playing in and out of this Pro League. And it's gone from excellent in the beginning and development moving forward to almost collapsing and I think this essentially that we've got now can you know boost the kids on the street listen they've got nowhere to go some of these kids are scraping trying to find employment here and there we've got football going again and I hope it brings the best out of the kids best out of the communities that they're coming from and the communities put time and effort into pitches again how they address the game making sure there's food and drinks and all of that it's all important because Trinidad and Tobago youths need this, men and women, we need it. What do you expect from the rest of the, the Ascension League this season? I'm expecting it to be very competitive because these guys have been waiting for a long time for the Pro League to work. You've got the Super League underneath them that are much more active, they're ready to go. I think the merging of the two different leagues will be great because we then see the big difference in the players and the teams, the coaches, it's all important because Inevitably, the best players and the best coach come to the top of the pile at the end. And, you know, we've only got to look at football in Trinidad and Tobago. Every national level is struggling at the moment. And that's not because we've got poor players. We've got excellent players, but they're not being found. They're not being dug out of these community 
football fields and games like we've seen tonight. So we need to get our heads down, have a look at the quality that we've got there, and then it's about bringing good coaches together to make these kids into a good, effective team that win games. At the end of the day, football is about winning, it's about success. That's what brings your sponsors, that's what brings money in, your TV rights. We've got to work hard at that. Youth was a big part of why um, why I won this evening. Um, do you think that their result tonight will encourage other young players to of course it step will. up in this league? You know, people will not see this, but at half-time tonight, I'm looking around the field of play. And around the field, there was little kids playing football. They're getting used to getting hold of the balls that were on the outside of the field. Mm -hmm. And they were doing all their little skill sets. I nearly got out of my seat to ask this kid his name, number of his parents. Because right. he looked fantastic. That's what Trinidad and the Caribbean in general, that's what we do. We create yeah. these gems that sometimes get overlooked and don't get seen because the coach has got his mind on other things. We've got to nick these bits of talent, these little gems in the rough, bring them to the forefront through youth development so leagues like this get bigger and better and then we in, in, invite and enjoy more sponsorship. What an amazing launch, the first weekend tantalizing on the taste buds and of course we've been satisfied. However, this is just the start. We're going to be following some of the best football teams in the country and we're going to be coming to a city near you. Who knows, we might just catch up with you. All you got to do is keep it locked. It's right here with Wide 868 and Flow Sports. It's brought to you by Terminex, the Ascension Invitational. This is how we do.